Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing a quick start video for those of you that have experience in another CAD program and are just getting started with plasticity. Now, if you're an absolute beginner and you don't know where to start, we're gonna be releasing another video for that as well. And we've done content like this before where we've talked about the UI and the workflow and plenty of other videos and playlists, but we haven't done any with the current version 24.2.x. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and refresh the content a bit. So in this video, if you're familiar with Blender or Maya 3D Studio, or if you're coming from a CAD program like Fusion or SolidWorks or Inventor, then this is the video for you because we're gonna to try to talk about setting it up and the differences in workflow. So you understand how plasticity works. If you, again, are, are brand new, no experience at all, I would wait for the longer form video where we'll talk more about the UI and the way that things work and we'll go through some examples and practices. This is not gonna be that video. Hopefully it'll be about 15 to 20 minutes. We'll try to pack as much in as we can. So first things first, if you've just downloaded a trial, make sure you go to your preferences, set your navigation to whatever navigation you prefer. I'm gonna be talking about plasticity defaults here, but if you're coming from Blender and you're just used to holding down shift in the middle mouse to pan, then set it to Blender so you're comfortable. If you wanna set your appearance colors, anything different, go for it. Just a word of caution, if you try to make it a light theme background, a lot of stuff is gonna get washed out. It really does not play well with a white background because the icons and things are, are just, they need to have a darker background. So I'm going to be sticking with basically the default, but you can play around with that. And last thing to really set and check is your units. I prefer to use the metric unit system millimeters, even though I'm in the US, generally because if I'm designing something for 3D printing, I want to have a rough idea of my build volume or my build plate size. And if I'm doing things like a concept car, like we did our series on, I'll generally go to the inch unit system just because it's easier for things like tire size and, and wheelbase for me, just based on uh, you know the way that I work. But make sure that you look at at least that once you get started modeling. It's not gonna matter for this video, but it is important in general. So now that we've got that out of the way, um, if you're looking to purchase, remember that we are an affiliate. You can use the code LEAD10 at checkout and that'll save you 10% and it does help out the channel. So if you are looking to purchase and you find the content helpful, uh, make sure that you do use that code LEAD10. So when you are first in plasticity, first thing I want you to do is get comfortable moving that cube around, that default cube. So if you're using the plasticity defaults, that's middle mouse, pressing that down will let you rotate. The mouse wheel will let you zoom in and out and the right mouse button is gonna be pan. It's also gonna be confirm. It works just like the enter key. So that, I, again, is my preference here. Whenever I jump between programs, I generally leave them as their default settings. But again, if you are coming from Blender and you just really, your muscle memory is holding down shift key in the middle mouse to pan, just go ahead and set that up. It's important that you're comfortable moving objects around in 3D. If you're not, you're not gonna really wanna use the program. So once you're comfortable with that, then we can start to talk about how to use it. So there are some key areas that I wanna cover in this video. I wanna talk about navigation and selections. I wanna talk about things like construction planes, and then I'll get into the tools and the contextual tools and the commands and how plasticity actually works. So the first thing that we want to understand is our selection. So we've got selection filters at the top. Again, if you're coming from Blender, then this is gonna be very similar. You're gonna use the keys across the top, one, two, three, and four, will be for your control points, your edges, your faces, and objects, so solids or surfaces. And then five or tab will let you select them all. Now Blender only has three, they, you know, they have the vertex selection, edge and face selection, but we've got entire solid objects because uh, Blender generally works in edit mode and that's where you see these, but we don't have an edit mode. We're always in direct editing. So make sure that you are comfortable with that for a couple of reasons. If you've got all selected, so everything is toggled on, the first thing you need to do is select the body you're interested in working with. Then it'll sort of go down the hierarchy and you can select faces or edges from there. The reason that this is important is because once we start having multiple objects, and I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom out for this a little bit. Uh, once we start to have multiple objects, then in order to say, 
add a fillet to the corner, I need to select this object, then its edge, then hold down shift, this one, this edge, this one, this edge, and just keep going. The reason that that's kind of a pain is because once you have more things that you're working on, if you just use edge selection, all you need to do is just select the edge. You don't have to pre-select each body. So it really does save a lot of time downstream. Right now, just getting started, it probably isn't gonna make much of a difference, but once you get more comfortable with plasticity, then it's going to be important. So get comfortable with one, two, three, four, and five. Another thing to note is that things like uh, curves, and I'll just, I'll just do a simple set of lines here. Um, the control points on the curves are only going to be visible when the control point selection is on. If we turn that off, those control points are not visible anymore. So if you are working with things like complex curves, then you are gonna wanna make sure you at least know how to turn that on. So that's gonna be your selection filters. The top right, we've got our view cube, and this is gonna be some of our default views, our top, our front, and our right. These can be um, very important because when we're creating curves, and we'll get into curves in just a little bit, but when we're creating curves, you'll notice next to the cursor, it says face on it. And this means that we can hop around in 3D. And the reason this is kind of important is because we need closed profiles to create things like extrudes, revolves, and sweeps. So if I come down and I make this triangle, for example, that closed profile can be selected and turned into a solid object. This one over here, those points are all over in space. So unless I do something like uh, scale it in Z down to zero, I, it's not gonna work. So we have to make sure that we understand that using these default planes is important. So for example, if I hit seven on the numpads, this is gonna go to my top view, or if I hit control and seven, it'll go to my bottom view. When I'm on this, if I start to create a curve, notice that it says face on it or edge, but it says X, Y. Uh, and that's important because we always wanna make sure next to the cursor that it says the plane that we're working on. So even though I selected geometry and I, and I kind of played around with it a little bit, it's still in 2D. So making sure that we understand that those construction planes are gonna be important is the first step in making sure that you're reducing your frustration and plasticity. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of these. I don't need to see them. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of most of that. So make sure that you understand the defaults. Again, one, three, and seven on the numpad, control one, control three, control seven will give you the opposite of that. So left instead of right, bottom instead of top, back instead of front. We also have temporary construction planes that we can create from our camera view. So things like creating a feature that is gonna go through this part based on our camera view construction plane. That's gonna be very helpful because see now we can pull this through and we can remove it. The other thing that we can do is we can create construction planes from selection. So you can click this button or you can hit spacebar. And anytime we create these temporary construction planes, we can use the save option. That way we can always go back to it. We can click on it to enable it, double click to go normal to that plane. And then we can go back and, and add more geometry. So these are again, important factors of a curved based approach to plasticity. Make sure that you are comfortable with the numpad one, three, and seven to get to those views, or make sure that you're comfortable with creating these custom planes, even if it's temporary. The default construction planes like XY, YZ, and XZ, these are gonna be our top, right, and front views. And if you click on them, it's gonna activate them, which means if I select, let's say YZ, and I start drawing, I am in the YZ plane. Now, if I double click on that, it'll go normal to that view. And that's a bit more helpful for me. But just keep in mind that you can use those as well as one, three, and seven, because those default views are here. Okay, so now we understand a little bit about navigation, our selection filters, and getting to these construction planes. Now let's talk a bit more about the tools that we have access to, and then we'll get into the workflow. So there are two main things in plasticity, tools and commands. The tools are over here on the right-hand side, and these are things like lines, splines. If you hold down the left mouse button for any of these that have that little gray arrow, you'll get more that are in that menu. But these are going to be curve-based creation tools. So we're gonna create a square or a rectangle or a circle or a polygon. 
And then we're going to turn that into a solid by doing things like extruding or revolving or sweeping it along a path. We've got a couple of intermediate curve tools, things that are going to bridge two curves together, that are going to trim or extend them. And then at the bottom, we've got these primitives, things like spheres and boxes and cylinders. So these tools are always going to be there regardless of what you have selected on the screen. It's just they're going to live in this area of the UI. In the bottom left, we've got these commands that are always going to be here as well. Now, these are things like move, rotate, and scale. We've got our Boolean down here, cut with a curve, mirror, and duplicate. The rest of the tools that we have are going to get access through either the see all commands, the F key, which brings up the same menu. It's just where the cursor is or it's gonna be contextually based on what you select. So for example, if I select a solid body, I've got unjoin, I've got a couple of array options, I've got a project. If I select an edge, I get different options. I can use this uh, pipe tool to create a pipe. This can be a cutaway or it can be a solid body. I can join it. Uh, it can be hollow or solid. I can use things like offset face or extrude and right click to accept. Those are going to be our contextual tools. Now, if we have a, a curve, for example, if I just have like um, this curve here, I will get different tools associated with the selection of that. Some of these tools will be curved based tools, things like rebuild or raise degree or things like adding a fillet. Uh, some of these will be based on the solids that can get created from them. So things like extruding or revolving or pipe or sweep. Uh, so those are all be available. And then some tools will be kind of an intermediate, like the, the fillet or the um, chamfer tool. So again, there are shortcut keys associated with these, but we can quickly and easily round the corners off of that um, just by using that fillet tool. So again, contextual, based on what you have selected, whether it's a profile, whether it's a curve, whether it's an edge, a solid body, a face, um, you know, these are all ways in which you're going to directly work and manipulate. A handful of these tools are not just contextual, but they actually will be activated when you make a selection. So if we select an edge, the fillet tool or chamfer tool is active by default. Uh, so if we pull it out, we get a fillet, we pull it in, we get a chamfer. Uh, if I select a face, offset face is on by default. Uh, so that'll let me move things around. So some of these tools will be default. Some of them will be contextual, our commands will be contextual, and some of them you will need to go actively find either in the show all commands or in the F menu. Now with the F menu, I do want to quickly note that we can right click and add our own shortcuts. We can add it to favorites, which is going to put it here in this little list just below the search bar. And that's a quick way that you can customize tools that you use all the time. If you don't want to use shortcuts for everything, putting it into that favorite section is a quick way to get access by just hitting the F key. So if you're coming from a CAD program like SolidWorks or Fusion, that's the default S key, that toolbox is generally what they call it. Okay, so now that we have all the information about where the tools and commands are, we know how to change our selection filter, we know how to go to these default views, now let's talk a bit about the workflow. So by default, and, and just universally speaking, plasticity is a direct modeler. So if you are a Blender user, this is akin to you going in and creating a new mesh object. Let's say that you add a mesh cylinder. So if we add a mesh cylinder in Blender, you would hit tab and go into edit mode and directly manipulate that, whether it's deleting a face or um, changing the size of something or adding more features, for example. So all of those things are directly manipulating that geometry. And that's how plasticity works. One difference is that in Blender, you're doing this in edit mode and directly manipulating the edges, the faces, or the vertices. And then you have things like a modifier stack where you could do a Boolean between multiple objects. That's not quite the case in plasticity. Uh, so for example, if I've got these two solid bodies overlapping and I hit Q to enable my Boolean selection, what I can do is I can join them together. I can save only the overlapping portion. I, um, I can remove one from another. I can keep the tools if I need to. But those Boolean operations are not stored in a modifier stack. Just you have to kind of think about it like you're using a modifier stack and then you're applying it to the model. So that's going to be our direct modeling approach. If you're coming from something like 
Fusion or SolidWorks where you're used to creating a sketch with dimensions and then turning that into your objects. That's not quite how it works either. Now we do have the option, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in over here. We do have the option to create geometry and define its size. By hitting tab, for example, I can say 750 millimeters. I can right click and I can turn this into a solid body. Now that body is 750 millimeters in diameter. And if I add additional features, let's say I add a hole in the center of it, and then I extrude it down and I remove it, that is going to be a hole in the center of my part at whatever specified dimension I had. The difference here is that it's not predefined by a sketch with dimensions. It's something that's done on the fly and directly. We do have some tools that allow us to measure that. So if we hit equal, um, we've got a measure tool that allows us to add, uh, add uh, measurements to things. We've also got a dimension tool using control and equal. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to add dimensions a certain distance away. Uh, and the reason this is important is because in some instances, we actually have control over those features. And I'll give you an example of that. So if I add, let's just say I add a hole to this part and I pull that all the way through. And I want to determine how far away that hole is from this side face. Well, I can do that by using control and equals. I can pick the center of that hole and I can pick this edge. And now I have a dimension, 313 millimeters and some change. If I select this and I go to my move command, notice there's now an underline here. So I can say that needs to be exactly 350 millimeters and I can hit enter. And now that hole is exactly 350 millimeters away from that referenced edge. So there are some tools like this, and I moved it before I uh, confirmed it, but there are some tools like this where we can do that, or we can move geometry around based on those dimensions. It's not universally true. Uh, you know, so for example, I, I have the measurement here, and if I move this around, the measurement is no longer valid. Uh, and, and there are, again, some limitations. I'm sure in the future this will probably change more, but there are some limitations to this. But if you are making, let's say, a simple prismatic shape and you're trying to control things like the whole locations, you do have some tools available to you to make that happen. But in general, think of it as a direct modeler where you're creating and directly manipulating geometry. If you want the size of this to change, then we need to use offset face and increase or decrease it. Uh, if we want the depth of this hole to change, then we kind of move it up or down. If we want to get rid of it, then we select it and hit delete. And in this case, if I want to completely patch it, I'll select all faces associated with the hole, and then it's able to just fill in that hole for us. So there are these tools, but it's just going to take a little bit more time for us to, to kind of get in the mindset of a direct modeler that doesn't have a modifier stack like Blender. It doesn't have a feature tree like SolidWorks or a timeline like Fusion. It's just going to be a more direct approach. So hopefully that gave you enough information to get started. This was by no means a full detailed deep dive into the program. We've got plenty of playlists on different workflows and we will be releasing another video that is geared more toward the absolute beginner new user. But hopefully at this point you have a basic concept or understanding on how it works and you're able to begin to play around and work with it. If you have any questions on this, or if there's something that maybe I missed that you felt was important, please let me know. I look at all these comments, I try to answer everybody, and I use that information when we do updates to this content. So I will do my best to incorporate those in the future. So any questions, please leave them below. If you like this content, consider subscribing. And remember, again, we are an affiliate. So if you are purchasing and want to save 10%, you can use our code LEAD10 at checkout. That'll save you 10%, but also will help out the channel. So as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.